Hello everybody, welcome to a new Let's Play that uh, I've been talking up with my subscribers. Yes, yes, we're going to play some Rising Tide. It just released, so I was pretty eager to jump in and get some content out there for you guys. Those of you who maybe are on the fence about buying the DLC, maybe on the fence about the whole game, uh, get this out there in front of you guys so that you can take a look at it and decide if uh, maybe you know some of the changes that they made have bought you into being a uh, you know getting beyond earth maybe you were turned off initially i know some people were or uh, maybe you know watching these videos will only confirm your suspicions that maybe it's just not the game for you maybe you pine for that alpha centauri experience that perhaps will never come again sad sad tear trickle down my cheek now anyways uh so before we get started i want to put a little disclaimer out there for you guys all right number one let's get this out of the way this i have not played beyond earth in probably about nine months and before i stopped playing i wasn't what i would call an amazingly exceptional gamer at it anyways so if you have come to this video uh expecting any kind of min maxing uh any kind of power gaming you might as well just turn the video off <laughs> because that's not what's going to happen. I'm just being honest with you guys. Uh, don't expect any like uh, leech strats or pro plays or MLG gaming here. Um, or I guess just MLG. MLG gaming is kind of, well, stupid. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so, but if, you're, if you want to just, uh, you know, check out the game with me, because you know this is a blind let's play for me. I, I you know I wasn't a beta tester or anything like that. I didn't get any any advanced copies of the game. If that sounds good to you, then that sounds great to me, and I'd love to experience this and get your thoughts on the game as well as I go through it. Which you can just leave as a comment under the video. So um, yeah, feel free to stick around if you'd like. So thank you guys. All right, so let's uh, let's just jump right in. We're gonna set up a game. Uh, so we can go Sputnik, Mercury, Vostok, Gemini, Soyuz, and Apollo. Well, um, Mercury is the normal difficulty. Vostok is moderate. You know, I haven't played in a long time, guys, so I'm probably going to just start on Mercury. Sorry. Uh, you know, I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, you know, uh, if you don't play on such and such, then, you know, you suck. And that's fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know, um, for me, I've never been like a... A really really what you'd call a strong Civ gamer uh, there are other strategy games where I'm much more leaning towards the min max part probably just because I've always just in enjoyed the Civ uh, series very I don't know casually just it's something that I pick up I might play for a week or two maybe a month but I never really invest enough time in it to get too good so uh, game pace. I personally love long games, long marathon games, but I think we're just going to go for standard here. And uh, planet size. Well, I am a big fan of uh, big things. That's what she said. So we're going to go massive. And I do know that they added in some new sponsors in Rising Tide. So we have the Al Fala. Uh, yield from city developments increased by 150%. Okay. Uh, Arc is one of the older ones. My cat is knocking things into the floor. Go away, cat. Go away. Go. Shoot. Shoot. I don't know. Let me check and make sure that she didn't just break something. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. Go. 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 Okay. I had to kick her out. So, so sorry about that. Cat's gonna cat, you know. Uh, yeah, Ark is one of the sponsors that was available from the start of the game. Pan-Asian Cooperative uh, also is one of the ones that was available from the start. First Wonder, built in every city, is free. Has that always been that way? Plus one uh, diplomatic capital from Wonders. You know, it is... Uh, extremely possible that they could have changed some of these sponsor effects. North Sea Alliance, that's new. Aquatic cities have 50% more co uh, combat strength and 50% less, cost 50% less to move. May make planet fall at sea if able. Nice. Renko Iberia, gain one free virtue for every 10 virtues earned with culture. That seems very, very familiar. I think that was the way it's always been. 
Slavic Federation, all orbital units, strategic resource requirements reduced by one. Start with four petroleum, titanium, and geothermal resources. Chungsu, this is a new one. Start with one free covert agent. Each successful covert operation in a foreign city rewards 10 science per agent rank. May make planet fall at CF able. That actually sounds pretty good. I typically do like to do covert operations. But I'm betting that this would be... I mean, I, I'm not speaking from experience here, but I figure on the harder difficulties, the covert operations are probably more difficult. And that maybe... <laughs> I don't know how that would work on harder difficulties. Paul Australia, two free trade route slots in the capital and one free trade route slot in all those cities. I think that's pretty familiar. Kavithan, protectorate, culture and energy costs to acquire new city plots are reduced by 30%. They were also available at the start. Integer, agreements cost 50% less diplomatic capital. Now this diplomatic capital uh, thing is new, I think. It has been a long time, guys, so you know, bear with me here. Purchasing units and buildings cost 25% less diplomatic capital. And Brasilia, Brasilia, war score points increased by 30%, gain one diplomatic capital for each unit killed in combat. African Union, 10% growth in cities when healthy, all specialist citizens produce one extra yield. All right, well, so it looks like they added in one, two, three, four. They added in four new uh, sponsors. Well, I'm certainly not going to play one of the sponsors that was available in Vanilla Beyond Earth. We need to play something new, right? So why don't we go for... I really want to try one of these um, ones that can make Planet Fall at Sea. That sounds really cool. Let's try Chungsu. Why not? Uh, choose colonists. Uh, we can go scientists, refugees, aristocrats, engineers, artists. Well, if we make planet fall at sea, which I bet we will, uh, sea tiles are usually pretty good, if I remember correctly, in terms of food production. Where we might... I, I, I'm struggling to remember. I think that ocean tiles are pretty balanced. Hmm... Maybe we should go science, plus two science in every city. I don't know, that could be a huge mistake. And if it is, then I'll, you know, I will pay penance in the future and learn from the errors of my ways. Spacecraft, uh, continental surveyor, reveal coasts on map, retrograde thrusters, wider area for choosing where to land first city, and additional visibility around starting area, tectonic scanner. I, I actually, when I played, I remember I really liked uh, tectonic scanner. I liked retrograde thrusters too. Retrograde thrusters is really good for picking out your first city. Tectonic scanner is really good if you're planning on rushing out second, like your your second and third city. Fusion reactor begin with 100 energy at standard speed and life form sensor reveal alien nests on map. Mm. Well, if we start out at sea, I don't really see how we're gonna have. I mean, petroleum. Yeah, you can have that in the water, but geothermal, titanium. I don't know. Let's do retrograde thrusters. Although, Continental Surveyor seems like it could be good too. Hmm. Cargo, hydroponics, laboratory, raw materials, weapon arsenal, machinery. I tend, I think I tended to like to go with hydroponics, to be honest. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And choose planet. We can go with Atherholt 302C, Frigid Terran World. A world with a few large land masses separated by oceans and some smaller islands. We can go with Antonez 321C, Primordial Protean World. A world of one ocean and one very large continuous land mass with the possibility of small coastal islands. And Griffin 12D, Primordial Atlantean World. Uh, world of islands of varying sizes separated by narrow water passages. We can go random or custom. Let's look at custom. So we can select planet type. I really hope they added in more planet types because that was something that I kind of didn't like about uh, the original, you know, the vanilla version. I don't. I didn't feel like it had enough planet types. Felt like everything was fairly samey. I don't know. I expected more. I guess. Um,
Okay, I think we'll, let's just go with Aether Hold here. I like uh, Frigid Worlds. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Let's go with this Aether Hold 302C. Start. And away we go. Or did it? Did it go? Much of Han J Moon's in an enigmatic personality. at a time bioluminescent flashes are the only visible muffled sounds of the ocean the only accompaniment these sessions were often preceded by the threat to overwhelm the participant intense focus was required to stay awake and alive and i imagine so i think that drive nuts like being underwater and meditating I, but i i guess uh, it would be pretty if you liked it i'm sure it would be very very tranquil so, alright, we're good to go. So it looks like we are going to make uh, Planet Fall at C. So, let's take a look here. What do we got around us? So we got some copper, some eggs, uh, some algae, and some gold. Um, so we want to try to get as many resources in our starting hex area as possible. So if we like settled, what if we settled right here? How many would we have? So that'd be six, eight, 10, 12, 15. If we settled here, we would have, what is that? Six, eight, 11, 15, 17, if we settled here, because we'd have both of these algaes. If we settled here, what will we have? We'd have 4, 7, 8, 10, 13, 16, so one less. I think this is the spot right here. If we settled here, we'd have 6, 9, 13, 16. I think this is the spot that gives us the best amount of like bang for our buck. And then we'll be able to expand out and take the copper, the xenomass, and the coral. What's down here? Shell. Okay. Alright, so we, uh, our first city, Jong, Jong Sang. Aquatic cities. You have found it in an aquatic city. First, aquatic cities do not grow I need to. Culture. I can't really hear the guys. The is he explaining that to us? The city when the city is founded, instead to claim new territory, aquatic cities require their second special ability. Aquatic cities can move. These cities float and can travel around the map. Whenever the city moves, it claims the tiles adjacent to its new location. This is how aquatic cities gain their territory. They can still buy plots with energy, however. Really? Okay. Aquatic cities do not grow with culture. Well, I'm glad we didn't take the culture, um, settler. Although I'm sure culture isn't something that you just want to ignore. So they only claim the plots adjacent to the city when the city is founded. Instead, to claim new territory, aquatic cities require their second special ability. They can move. That's very strange. Huh. How do they move? To so move an aquatic city, select the Move City Project from the city's production list. Then select the plot you wish to move to. When the Move City Project is complete, the city will move to the plot you choose. There are some restrictions on where aquatic cities can move. You can only move to an adjacent plot. The plot must be shallow water, coast terrain, until you research planetary survey. Ah. You cannot move closer than two plots away from another city or outpost. You cannot move onto an existing station or planetary wonder. Okay. So what I'm really wondering here is, does that mean that if you're an aquatic city, you can only ever work? No. Your borders should still pop, right? But they won't pop, because it just says they don't pop. You, you move your city. 
So does that mean that, like, say if I took this city, moved it here, like, we would still keep these borders, but we would we would branch out and take these three as well? If that's the case, that sounds pretty good. How can I found more cities? Cities come from building new outposts and sheltering them until they grow into cities. Building outposts, the precursor to a city, is the sole action available to the colonist unit. I mean, this is pretty samey. Okay, aquatic cities. Oh, well, that's the same thing. Okay. All right, well, man, it has been so long since I've played, so uh, forgive me if it takes me a second to get back in the saddle here, guys. Victory's updated, new progress. Is there anything new here? Nah, this all looks pretty samey. Pretty samey. So, promised land is... Launch a laser comm satellite in progress. Okay. So that's like... Um, like a science victory. Transcendence is also kind of like a science victory. But it's like... It's like a harmony, I think. Isn't it? Is that harmony? Ugh. God, I can't remember hardly anything. Purity, harmony, supremacy. Yeah, so this is like... The Harmony Victory. Contact. Yeah. Domination, military, emancipation. I think that's like the... I think that's like the Supremacy Victory. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. What do we got here? Resource pod discovered. You discovered a resource pod. Sending a unit to investigate may yield you... you know, I, re I remember that. I remember that much. Right click, get rid of those. Another resource pod. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Alright, well, uh, we definitely need to choose a research project here, don't we? Looks like things have uh, changed a little, huh? Like they've added some bells and whistles to it. And these colors are new, I think. Does that kind of show you like what the uh, affinity is for it? So like this is, yeah, harmony and purity. That's a good touch to be able to just see it like that. All right, so we start out here in the middle and we need to pick, um, pick what we're gonna research. So what would be the best for us? We have to keep in mind that we are aquatic. And if we look at what's around us, like it's going to kind of dictate uh, potentially which direction we want to go in terms of like harmony, uh, purity, or supremacy. It doesn't always, but normally, yeah. I know we have this xenomass here, which leans towards harmony, but we also have floatstone, which is supremacy. But I don't see really anything else. So I guess really we don't have to commit necessarily to anything right now. Okay. Alright, well let's look back at this research then. Okay, so what does pioneering get us? Allows trade depot building, allows the colonist trade convoy and trade vessel. Well, I don't think we're going to be um, doing any of this just yet. I'm not one of these guys that rushes out a quick colonist or anything. Planetary survey allows amphibious trade and allows aquatic cities to move on to ocean tiles. So this, if you do this, you research this, it lets you actually move your cities out into the deeper non-coastal parts of the ocean, which is pretty badass. New aquatic outposts must still be established on legal coast. Okay, so when you're, okay, so when you're wanting to make a new city, you still have to start it on a coast. And then uh, once it once it grows into a proper city, then it can say, you know, I'm out. Screw you guys. I'm going home. All right. Well, we could do chemistry, which would uh, put petroleum on the map, which is pretty important. Engineering will reveal titanium. Physics. Dry dock can only be constructed in aquatic cities. Would boost our production. 
I think uh, what we'll do here is we're gonna go chemistry. We're gonna go chemistry to gain a little bit of clarity, maybe about uh, about where our next city might go. Vivarium. Yeah, we can't even make that. We don't need that. Thermohaline rudder. Give science maintenance is one production or one energy. Okay, so it makes it where it costs less production to move the city. All right. So it makes it easier to grow your borders. Clear miasma. Can water have miasma? Is there any miasma on the water tiles? Maybe on the coast. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any miasma on the water. That's kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah, let's go. Let's go chemistry. And then we need to choose some production here. Ha, move city nine turns. Wow. Very nice. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm usually a pretty big fan of uh, getting out another explorer. What's this? An explorer. So this explorer, though, it, it's it's like a land explorer. The patrol boat is uh, navy. All right? Can the explorer go out here in the water? It kind of looks like yeah. It looks like it's hovering. I mean, it's a coast, but it looks like it's hovering. That's neat. Uh, otherwise, we could go clinic. For the science and health, which would help our city grow a little bit faster. Uh, plus two, culture, and then capital. What's this? Diplomatic capital is used to improve your diplomatic traits, to improve your standing with other colonies, or to create foreign policy agreements with those colonies. We have three in total income. Three from the output of all cities, zero from diplomatic agreements, zero spent on diplomatic agreements. Well, I got no friggin' clue what that is, guys, but you know what? We're going to get to the bottom of it in this playthrough. I, gar I guarantee you. All right, um, I'm thinking, let's go clinic. No, 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 let's go old earth relic. Yeah, let's go old earth relic. Uh, we'll get that culture going so we can get a culture pop. Select project, okay. What do we want to do here with our project? Homeland security, um, plus 1% production for wonders for each agent at headquarters. Plus two percent health. I think we go health first. Let's try to grow our city. And yeah, we'll assign you here, right? Maybe. I mean, we, that's the only place we really can assign them because we haven't found any other cities yet. So, a unit needs orders. So we've got our explorer over here. We already know uh, of the location of some resource pods. I'm going to leave that one alone because I'm going to think I'm thinking that we might very well be the only. Well, we probably aren't, but I'm in this area, we're probably the only show on the water. So we're going to go up here and grab this one. So we'll go this way, and then next turn, we'll pick that. We'll we'll pick that up. All right, guys. Um, I'm pretty stoked about this game. I liked Beyond Earth. I know a lot of people didn't like Beyond Earth. I enjoyed it. It did for me kind of scratch that Alpha Centauri itch that you know I picked up somewhere back in the late '90s. <laughs> what a great game Alpha Centauri was! But um, it's not the same. But it did did somewhat hit that spot. Uh, I like I like the graphics. I like the art style. The music's pretty nail on the head for me. The whole feel of the game feels good. So, um, you know, I'd love it if you stayed around and watched more of the series. I'm going to be putting out one video per day uh, of this series, and we'll go until basically, you know, we either win the game or we lose. So, you know, there is that. Yeah. So.
pretty stoked about the game. Ready to see more of it. Ready to learn more of it. And get good. I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Until then, game on.